So when you're just getting started with Linux, learning the command line can be a very intimidating task. Today in this video, we're going to be simplifying this and laying out the top 25 most commonly used Linux commands that I use every day in my work. If you're new here, I'm Colin with Cyber Career School, and my main goal is to provide this free education on YouTube. I'm really aiming towards doing more of these long form tutorials, and I really like sharing out my knowledge and all the stuff that I have learned over the years because I have seen YouTube as a great learning asset for myself. So I think that is a great opportunity to give back to this platform and this community. So without further ado, let's get right into it. I think that it is a very common experience when you just first get your first Linux distribution, um, you open up the command prompt and you really don't know anything. Maybe you'll just do ls, maybe you'll do cd. Um, but this video, we're going to be getting a little bit more in depth than this. We're going to be teaching you, um, again, the 25 most commonly used Linux commands. and. Really, I think that this will serve as a course for beginners. Um, it'll be a, hopefully a pretty quick and concise video. And then I would like to do an intermediate and advanced video after this so you can fully progress and become a Linux super user by the end of this series. So the first thing that we're going to do is to open the command prompt. Um, the terminal is pretty much found on the top bar or depending on the distribution that you have, um, it, it could be found in the menu. Um, there are also lots of shortcuts for that, so you can look that up as well. So in Kali Linux, you can do Control-Alt-T, that will spawn you the terminal. Command number one is PWD. That stands for Print Working Directory. And I think that this is really important to point out first, because it, when you open up this command prompt, you, you're not really sure where you are. And this will tell you the, working, the directory that you're working out of. Logically, after you know what directory you're working out of, you want to figure out what's in that directory. So by performing ls, you can see what is in the directory, and that just stands for list. So there are a lot of different things you can do with ls. Um, in particular, most commonly, I like to do ls tack la. And when I say tack, I just mean dash. That is common Linux terminology. So I'm going to do ls tack la. Um, tack is meant to specify the arguments of the command. So we're going to do ls tack la. L stands for the long format. So as we can see, we have the permissions over here, which I will actually get into in the intermediate course. Um, but for now, just understand that these are permissions. And then we have information associated with the users. We have the size, and then we have the timestamp. The A flag stands for showing hidden files. That You can think of that as all. Um, hidden files in Linux are files that start with a dot. Um, so if I was to just do another ls, I would not see any of these files that start with a dot. So I already brought up command arguments. Command arguments are extremely important, and the more familiar with, you get with Linux, the easier these command arguments get to understand and implement. And you begin to memorize them very quickly, and you can do really powerful tasks with that and fully customize out the commands you're doing. So you're, you must be wondering, do I have to Google every single one of these command arguments? No, you don't. So we can actually use the man command, which is M-A-N, to show us a manual for the specific command that we're going to be doing. So the syntax for this is man, and then we're going to see what flags we can do with ls. So we're going to do man ls. And so we can see a, which is what we used, all. And we can just step through this by hitting enter. So you step down on enter. And we can see all of the different arguments. And you're going to find that for, all, for most Linux commands, there's a man page. Um, if there's not a man page, you can do a tech help sometimes, and that will actually give you a similar output. So when you're done with this, you can hit Q to quit. So as you see, at the bottom it says press H for help, or Q to quit. So we're going to press Q and quit out of this. We've been stuck in one directory so far. How do we change directories? So we're going to change directories by typing the command cd, which stands for change directory. So let's change into documents. So we can start typing cd, capital D, O, C. And then one of the great things about the Linux terminal is that you, there's tab completion. So as we see that there's nothing else that has a D, O, C. So we can hit tab, and it will complete the command for us. Great. 
Now we are in documents and we can see that our the command line head is updated. So if we just want to practice a command that we already learned, we'll do pwd, we'll see where we're at, it'll tell us that we're in root documents. So there's a lot that you can do with CD and I'm not going to get into all of it in this video, but I think five of the most useful CD arguments or, or variations that you can do are, so you can do CD, just plain CD, will take you to your home directory. As you can see, the home directory in Linux is denoted with the squiggly mark. We'll do an ls here, we'll see that we are there. What happens if you have changed a directory and you wanna go back right to your other directory and you don't wanna type out the full path? We're gonna do cd tac, and that'll bring us right back to root documents as you can see. How do we go up a directory? We don't really wanna type in uh, root, slash root, we wanna just go in the most simple form as possible. So let's do cd dot dot cd dot dot brings you up one directory. So you can do, if you want to go up multiple directories, you can go cd dot dot slash dot dot slash. And then we've gone up multiple directories. We'll go back with cd tac. Now we're back in the root directory. Also, one important thing to point out is that you can do these, you can do a lot of full paths with tab completion. So we'll do cd We'll specify the root directory, which is the squiggly mark slash, and then we'll hit tab. Tab will show us all of the available options for this. So we're gonna start typing D. We're gonna hit tab again. You might have to hit it twice. It'll show us the three directories that have that start with a D. Let's do DO. Again, let's go to downloads. Okay, there we are. So as you can see, the CD command is extremely useful. So one thing that you need to know about the tech industry is that we are all extremely lazy and we would like to get away with doing the simplest possible command. Uh, the least amount of typing possible, the least amount of interaction possible. There is an awesome feature and this is not specifically a command but I absolutely have to point it out at the beginning of this tutorial and it's the up arrow. The up arrow will allow us to access our, our bash history. So we just we can keep hitting up to see all of the commands that we've actually run. So we can run through everything that we've done so far today. And then you can hit down as well. And that is extremely helpful. So let's hit the up arrow. We'll go up to a command that we want to rerun and then we just hit enter. Next command that we're going to be doing is the su command. The su command stands for switch user. This is really important when you're switching between different users with different permissions. So in this case, I'm going to be switching from the ck user to the root user. And one thing that you need to know is the root user is just like the super user of Linux. So they have a lot of different privileges, they have diff access to different areas of the file system. So we're gonna just change to the root user. So we're gonna do su root. Then we're gonna be prompted to enter a password. And now we are the root user. We're gonna type the next command we're gonna be doing is to is who am I? So this is a really useful command to see which user you're running under. So we're seeing that we're under root. So I want to switch back to CK. So let's do, we're back at CK. Let's do who am I again? Okay. So we have a lot of stuff on our screen. Let's just make it a lot cleaner by running the clear command. There we go. That just cleans out our screen. So we have less, less busyness to look at. So going along with the same trend talking about running things as a privileged user, um, so for example, CK is not a privileged user. So I will have to call that, that permission um, to actually, or that role to actually run something that, that might be a little bit more uh, privileged to actually run. So let's say that we want to add a user. This, is, this is, again is something that, that requires a, a super user to do. So let's do this. So going along with the similar trend talking about privileged users and privileged access, um, we're gonna be using the sudo command. Sudo stands for super user do. Um, so basically we're calling this, this higher privilege to actually run a command that, that requires that higher privilege context. So we're gonna be doing sudo sudo. And then, so just as an example of a command that, that does require this super user privilege is user add. So we're gonna add a user called Linux 101. 
So we're gonna do super super user do user add Linux 101. Next, we're gonna do sudo password user one. Take note that it doesn't actually end in words, sudo passwd. So now we're gonna be adding a password for this user. And then you're gonna be asked to confirm it. This was just a simple example of actually applying the, the super user do privilege. Let's just show you what happens if I try to do it without. So we're gonna see permission denied. When you see permission denied, that's when you know you have to apply sudo to the beginning of the command. Next, we're gonna be talking about echo. Echo is a really important command when you're working with text strings and files and all of things like that. Um, I'm gonna be showing a really e simple example, but in my further courses like the intermediate and the advanced course that I'm gonna be putting out on YouTube, um, this can be chained with a lot of different commands. It can be used to actually um, print out the output um, in, in longer, longer strings and one-liners that, that we can do to actually manipulate these, these files and text. So, echo, actually just writes the arguments that are passed to it to standard output. Seems really simple, so let's try it out. We're just gonna echo hello. There we are, that's echo. We're gonna revisit this later when we're actually doing some operations with files and, and see some of the more powerful operations that we can use this for. So next, we're gonna be moving on to some of the file operations that we can perform with Linux. This is much easier, in my opinion, than actually just going into, say, File Explorer on Windows and dragging and copying and pasting files. So we're going to see that actually get applied to the command line syntax right now. So the first one we're going to be doing is copy. So that's just CP. But first, we have to figure out what we, what we want to copy. So calling back on our old knowledge, let's do an LS. We'll list out. I want to copy linux101.txt and I want to copy that into the Linux 101 directory. So let's see how we're going to do that. I'm going to type l tab.txt tab. So we're going to copy linux101.txt to Linux 101 directory. One important thing to note about copy that's different from some other similar commands is that it leaves the original linux.txt file in the directory and actually makes a copy of it, which sounds pretty straightforward, but We'll, this will make more sense when I show you the move command. So we're going to do Linux 101, and we're going to copy it there. So we're going to do an ls. We see that linux101.txt still exists. And calling back on our old friend cd, we're going to change directory into Linux 101. And here's the moment of truth to see if our file successfully copied over. We're going to do another ls. There it is. Next, we have the move command. I personally use move a lot more than I use copy. Move is just MV. Instead of leaving the original file in its place and just copying it to another directory, move deletes it out of the old place and moves it to the new directory. Uh, another useful thing of move is to actually what I mainly use it for, it's to rename files. So you can move a file within the same directory and call it a different name. So let's try that right now. One of the ways that I can add text to this file is I can actually just echo into the file. Like I said before, this echo becomes very useful. So we're gonna do echo. We're gonna pass it as string. And then we're gonna give it the right hand caret. The right hand caret tells it to overwrite everything that is in the file. If you give two right hand carets, it tells you to append it to the bottom of the file. Right now, we're just gonna be, since there's actually nothing in this file, we're just gonna be overwriting the whole file, and then we're actually gonna give it the destination. How do we read files in Linux? We're, the first command that I'm gonna be doing to show you how to read files in Linux is cat. So we're gonna be doing cat, linux102.txt. Cat 
is mainly used to read out the files, but it actually can be doing some other operations to modify the files. But for now, just use it to read the files. One of the things that differentiates this from some other uh, ways to read files is that it prints out the full file contents and all the strings to the terminal. There we go. So we have um, hello test that is in that file. If we want to add another file, um, how would we do that? One of the ways to do that is by just doing touch. Touch is a way to create a valid empty file in Linux. So we're going to do touch and then the file name. Since we got rid of Linux 101.txt, let's replace that. Doing another ls, there we are. We have our files here. What if I want to get organized and I want to create another directory? How do I do that? This is really simple with the make dir command. It's so that the, that is mkdir, and then I specify the name of the directory. So we're going to call this Linux 101. We're going to do an ls. We see that it's blue, which with this um, bash rc, which is the profile that I'm running, um, that defines all the colors and everything, that tells me that this is the directory. So I want to move Linux 101 into Linux 101. Linux 101.txt into Linux 101 directory. Let's do a Linux 101. There we go. See the tab complete tells me what, what's available that I can run. And then I'm going to do Linux 101. We're going to cd into that directory just to confirm our changes. And there we go. This isn't the Linux 102 course, so we're going to remove that file. And let's see how we can do that right now. So we're going to do rm, which stands for remove, Linux 102.txt. That's going to remove that. But how do we remove directories? So there's a couple ways how you can move directory, but first we need to make a new one because I don't want to get rid of the Linux 101 because that's the course we're in. We're going to make dir test. We see that we have test. We're going to do rm dir, so which stands for remove directory test. We got rid of it. Let's do it again. We're going to hit the up arrow, make another directory test. Let's do the rm command and then give it a tack r. The tack r actually removes the contents of the directory and it removes the parent directory. So let's try that out. There we are. So let's cd into our Linux 101 directory and get ready to get into some of the cooler commands. Like I said before, there are a number of ways how we can actually read out a text file. To save some time, I added some context to this, this file that we have, so this Linux 101.txt. Using the command that we already know, cat, I'm going to cat ltab Linux 101.txt. As we can see, I just have some standard text in here, which is a nice placeholder. So let's clear this out and let's talk about some other ways to actually view this text in here. Like I said before, cat is a good way to show shorter files. What if you have a longer file? For that, we can use less. So for less, when you have a longer file, you can actually step through it by hitting enter. And then when you're done, you can hit Q. So you can think of less as like the same, same environment that you have the man page. So we can do man less. As you can see, this is very similar. So you hit enter to go down. So just imagining that this was your text file and you can see all the text top to bottom. This is a lot better. It's separate from the actual terminal. Um, unlike cat, to get, out of the, to get out of less, you hit Q. What happens if you have a large amount of files? So tying this to the cybersecurity, 
So what happens when you have a large amount of text in the file and you only want a certain subset of that text? Um, just tying this to the cybersecurity industry, for example, so say that you were performing a password spray and you had the global address list, which is a list of all of the different email address that you pooled for this environment. Um, so you're, you're getting ready to perform this password spray and you want to only use the top 200 users. Um, the, the command that we're going to use for that is head. And head, you can specify um, how many actually you want. I'm just going to do the default head to keep this tutorial um, pretty, pretty simple and because I don't have a crazy big text file. So we're going to run head linux101.txt. There we go. Next, we're going to be talking about tail. Tail is the pretty much the opposite of head. Again, tying this to, back to some real world examples, I will usually run tail on logs. Um, especially I'll run tail on files that are currently being written to because I can see the most recent uh, content that's being added. So for example on logs, um, if, I, uh, if I SSH or which is called secure shell, if I SSH into a server and I want to actually see why something failed, I want to see what the last log is, I'm going to run tail. And this will just show me the bottom. Um, for this text that we have right now, this isn't very useful. but Go ahead, grab some uh, really, really big strings or some big files online or create your own and try this out. And then always, I really encourage you guys to, to not just go through all these commands and look at them in the most simple form, but run um, a man or manual page on the actual command. So we can see that there are all of these options that we can do with tail. We'll quit out of that with Q and we will move on. So now that we saw the entire files, how do you go about searching for a specific string or a specific pattern within a file? And that's when we use grep. Grep is extremely powerful and you can think of this basically the control F of Linux. I'm going to actually do an entire video on grep because I think that I can provide a lot of content, provide a lot of real world examples on grep. So stay tuned for that. But for now, we're just going to be doing the basic um, example of grep and then you can play around with this on your own. Now we're just going to do a really simple example of grep. Um, there are, grep is extremely powerful and I'm going to devote an entire course to this in the future. But just for this, you need to think of grep really as that control F of the Linux command line. Um, you can obviously link it to a lot of different things and you can get really powerful with it. Um, right now, I just have this really simple text file and I want to just identify how many occurrences are of there are th of this random string. So we're going to do grep, G-R-E-P, TAC C, which is count, and then we're going to do TAC W, and you can obviously get all of this information from the man page or the help page. So W specifies the word that we're looking for. So it's O-F-F-I-C-I-A. And then we're going to do the file that we're actually looking into. So I believe that there's only one occurrence of the word officia. So let's hope that grep gives us that same answer. There we go. It gave us one. Um, this is, Again, this is an extremely simple version of grep. Um, but I, again, I'm trying to really keep this tutorial as simple and concise as possible and really prepare you for the intermediate and advanced um, videos that I'm going to be putting out. Feel free to really just pause this video here, take, take um, all the time you need to read the man page of grep and, and get as familiar and acquainted with it as you need to be. It's really fun to play around with. So now let's talk about the different ways that we can actually edit these text files. Um, built in on most Linux distributions, um, there are multiple ways where you can edit these text files. I think that the best one you can start out with and the most simple one to learn with the, the slightest learning curve is nano. So we're just going to type nano linux 101.txt and there we are. So this is nano. Um, 
some important things to note about Nano are that there are no undo. And then there's actually all of these shortcuts at the bottom that are really useful. So we just want to add some, some random things. So we're going to say, hello, I'm learning Linux, right? So how do we get out of here? There's no control S on this, for example, like you would be used to. Um, it, we have to, in, and get familiar with this in Linux, we have to use our resources. So we see right here that there is the upward caret X is exit. So that is just control X. So control X, then it will tell you, are you interested in saving? We're going to say yes. And then we're going to, do we want to rename the file? Do we want to keep the file name the same? We're just going to go enter. So we're going to cat this again. There we are, hello, I'm learning Linux. So another text editor that you can use is Vim. Um, Vim is definitely a harder learning curve, but it is extremely powerful when you begin to learn all the shortcuts. So let's just jump right into it. So we'll do Vim, or sometimes you can just do VI, uh, depending on your distribution and what you actually have installed nat natively. Um, so we're gonna do linux101.txt. This is not going to be an entire uh, Vim tutorial. I also am interested in doing a bit of a Vim tutorial or a Vim, like my top tip, tips or something similar to this. Um, but some of the things you need to know when you're just doing simple text editing is right now um, we are not in the insert mode. So I can actually just type, but it's going to do a lot of crazy things because Right now we are in the mode where all of the keys are, except for I, are tied to different commands. Um, so to get out of that, we're gonna type I, which puts us in insert mode. As you can see on the bottom, we're in insert mode. We're gonna do, add some new line characters and we're gonna just type, hi, I'm Vim. Okay, so this is the interesting part. Um, so now that we're done, we're gonna hit escape. That gets us out of insert mode. So there's a joke about Vim that I would like to share with you all. And it's, how do you get a large amount of random strings? Think about it for a second, but the answer is that you give a computer science 101 class Vim and tell them to exit it. Um, it can actually be, <laughs> it can be pretty complicated. There are two ways that I like to exit Vim. So you're gonna hit escape to make sure you're out of insert mode. Then you're gonna do colon X or colon WQ. I personally just do colon X because it's faster. That's gonna save and exit out of Vim. So we're gonna just, we're gonna less our file this time just to change it up and reemphasize those old topics we covered. And there we are. We'll hit Q to get out of Vim again. We'll do clear just so we have um, less busyness going on in the terminal. And let's move on. For the next example, I'm just gonna be creating a really simple shell script. And if you're not familiar with shell scripts or bash scripting at all, uh, just as a brief intro to it, um, think of this as a lot of, a, a, a series of Linux commands that you're operating on the shell that, that when you call the script, they just get executed all the way through. That's really as simple as that, and you're gonna get to see that now. So let's do nano, because that's the best editor to learn as a beginner. And you can actually specify a new file um, in nano, so we don't actually have any other files other than linux101.txt, but we'll do nano linux 101, if I could type, dot sh. sh is the extension for a shell script. And there we are. We can confirm that we are in Linux 101.sh on the top. So the way that we define these shell scripts is with a shebang. And bear with me for a second while I explain this. But so we're going to do hashtag exclamation mark. So it's hashtag bang. A lot of times in Linux terminology, um, the exclamation mark is a bang. Then we're gonna do user usr bin bash. And this just tells the computer that to interpret this as a bash or a shell script. We're gonna hit enter. We're gonna do something really simple. So we're just gonna do echo. 
we're going to do echo I'm in a script. So how do we save this? We go control X, yes, enter. So now that we have this, we're going to do an LS and we see our shell script. Just out of curiosity, we can also um, cat shell scripts. So we'll do linux101.sh. There we are, that's our shell script. Here is where we get really fun with this tutorial. How do we run this shell script? First, we need to introduce a new command, and that is chmod. And this is basically just changing the permissions of the file, so the, the, the actual executing the file. So for this, so right now, as you see, it's, a, um, it's actually white. Um, so I'm gonna do, just to emphasize this, I'm gonna do a ls tech la. We're gonna see the permissions that we actually have. So as you see, um, just kind of introducing this topic right now, but the x is in execute. Um, so we see that for Linux 101.sh, we have no execute permissions. How do we add that? We're gonna do chmod plus x, and this is the shorthand for it. Um, there are a lot of different variations of chmod, so for example, if we were to give it all permissions, we would do chmod 777, that would give rewrite execute permissions. Um, we are just gonna do plus x, and then we're gonna give it the file name. And watch what we see here. So we do another lsla, so it gives us the full long. And we see that number one, we see the execute permission in there. Number two, we see, when we just do it regular ls, we see that the color has changed. Um, again, this does relate to the bash profile that you have, but for most distributions where they have a decent up-to-date bash profile, you're gonna see at least some type of change in this that it becomes executable. So how do we actually run this? So we're gonna do dot slash, hit tab, and it already knows because it's, it's the only shell script that is within this directory. So let's kick it off. That's it, I'm in a script. Um, as you can see, you can tie any Linux command into this bash script, so you can get it doing some really cool things. Now I'm gonna show you a command that I use every single day, multiple times a day. So we're gonna CD up a directory for this example. We're gonna see where we're at. And then, so next we're gonna be copying the directory that we already created, just so we don't mess up any of our previous work in our, in our newly created bash script. Um, so we're gonna do cp tac r. Tac r specifies that we're gonna be copying the contents of a directory and the parent directory itself. We're gonna do Linux 101, and then we're gonna do dot slash Linux, or let's, how about we call this temp? There we go. And dot slash, um, I might have just glossed over that, but dot slash just tells um, the command prompt that says dot, so dot is this directory, right? So if I do cd dot, nothing will happen, right? So that just, I'm in the same directory. That's why dot dot is up. Um, so dot slash just tells me that it is within this directory. So let's do a clear, and next we're gonna be doing zip. Zipping is extremely important and extremely easy in Linux. So let's just talk about the, the first one that we're gonna be doing. So we're gonna do a zip tac r. Um, we're gonna do this for the directory, so it's recursive. Um, we're gonna do temp, so temp.zip. So the zip name comes first, so it's zip arguments the new directory name, and then temp, right? So we see that all of the contents are stored now, and we see that we have a new zip. So now we get to the really interesting part, and I use this a ton. So now we're gonna do a password encrypted zip. Um, this is really useful, for example, when I am uh, developing payloads and I need to move them between machines um, and I do not want to trip off any type of antivirus and get myself yelled at um, by the, the, security, the internal security team in the IT department, um, this is when I'm going to do an encrypted zip. For this, it's really simple. We're going to be doing zip, tack E, R. E is the encrypted zip part. R's, we're telling it it's recursive. So we're gonna do temp 
or let's do pw temp pw for password it doesn't really matter what you call it here dot zip and then we're going to call it on temp now we're going to be prompted to enter a password choose a strong password on this one also you're going to be asked to verify your password one important thing to point out is that for a lot of Linux distributions, um, you're gonna be typing the password. It's gonna be looking like nothing is actually happening, but you just have to know that there's gonna be no dots or nothing that's actually gonna be showing it, but your password is gonna be getting typed into there. And there we go, there we have our encrypted zip. Unzipping it is really simple as well. So we'll just do an unzip temp.zip It's gonna ask you, because I'm doing this in the same directory, if there are any conflicts. Um, we are just going to say no, N. So it's gonna ask me for everyone. But that's it, that's the simplest version of zipping and unzipping in the Linux terminal. If you are in the cybersecurity industry like myself, hashing is extremely important and the next two commands are going to be focused on hashing and i'm going to show you how to really easily accomplish this from the linux command line we're just going to um, cd into our directory let's see where we are we're going to do linux 101 say that this is a um, script that we see on a system and we think that it potentially could be malicious let's just do a md5 hash on this so the syntax for this is md5 sum linux 101.sh and this is going to output us a hash this is really important and i'm not trying to jump away from the the actual scope of this course that we're talking about today but if you were in the cybersecurity industry, then you would be looking up this hash in an engine like VirusTotal to compare it to the other known malicious hashes. So this is extremely useful. One thing to note about hash, if you were to change uh, one character in this and run it through this MD5 algorithm, it would provide a completely different output. MD5 is a pretty simple hash. Um, let's do a SHA-256 hash. So this is a little bit uh, more complex of an algorithm. So do SHA sum, we'll do TAC A, which specifies the algorithm, and then we'll do 256. And then we'll do Linux 101.sh. Keep note of the different hash lengths that we have. And there we go. So we got our hashes two different ways. So the next two commands we're gonna be talking about are actually using the command line to retrieve files. So for this, I'm just gonna pull down a random file. So I just, I work with Go a lot. Um, so I'm just gonna be pulling down Go. So I'm gonna be, I'm gonna actually paste this in so I don't have to do the entire thing. But I'm gonna be doing a wget with the parameter C. So it's gonna actually remotely pull this down as we see it's going on right now. And then we're gonna be able to see the go in my directory. Wget is extremely useful for grabbing files really quickly. Um, most of the package installations and guides you're gonna go through when you're um, beginning to learn Linux and setting things up, you're gonna actually, a lot of the steps are gonna be pulling down packages with wget and also curl. So the next one we're gonna be talking about is curl. In addition to wget, we also have curl. Curl is a little bit more extensive than wget. I use curl a lot. Um, a lot of the times, so a trick that you can actually do to get your, your public IP is to do curl, I-C-A-N-H-A-Z-I-P. I can't talk and type at the same time, but I'm not actually gonna run this because I would not like to share my public IP, but I can actually run a um, epoch. So I-C-A-N-H-A-Z-E-P-O-C-H dot com. And this is because this, this endpoint that I'm actually reaching out to, so the I can has epoch, um, is actually serving up this, this information in a format that you can curl or that you can query. Think about it that way. 
So we got my epoch time there. Um, this is extremely useful when you're getting this, this type of remote, your mo remote data. I'm just gonna throw in two bonus commands um, that I also use that I thought about during, during the duration of this. So the first one is gonna be ping. Ping sends an ICMP packet to a server. So basically, or, or any endpoint on the internet. Um, so it's gonna send this and then it's gonna wait for a response. When it gets back a response, it's going to tell you some information and also it's just going to tell you that you can access this. So I'm going to ping 8.8.8.8 and this is just Google's DNS server. So we're going to see um, we have the pings coming in, we have the sequence packets, we have the TTL and then the time. There we have it. You have added 25 plus a few bonus commands to your Linux arsenal. Now, take a little bit of time for this to really sink in. Keep practicing. The best way to really practice is to try to do like a lot of your op daily operations on Linux. It might take a little bit longer in the beginning, but actually you'll find that Linux is much, much faster than Windows just performing most of the daily operations that you actually do. So, get some more experience. Stay tuned for when I put out the intermediate and the advanced videos on Linux. Thank you so much for staying tuned through this whole video. If you like this, I'm gonna to try to put up in a companion uh, article on my blog, so that's cybercareerschool.com. And if you're interested in more of these videos, just subscribe and also stay tuned to my blog for some more related articles. Thanks.